The cartilage is removed from the glenoid face using the glenoid scrapette. The glenoid pin guide corresponding to the desired 24 or 28 mm diameter base plate is placed on the glenoid face, and the calibrated 2.8 mm guide pin is driven into the glenoid. The central hole within the guide provides a neutral orientation, while each of the four peripheral holes orients the pin 10 degrees divergent from the neutral pin axis. A determination of the central post length can be made by noting the laser markings on the pin shaft. Alternatively, those using the virtual implant positioning system may orient the guide wire using the VIP glenoid targeter for enhanced accuracy. Measurement of the guide wire depth in the glenoid as it relates to central post or screw length may be determined through the use of the guide wire depth gauge. The glenosphere sizing guide may then be placed over the guide pin to visualize the location of the inferior most rim of a chosen glenosphere size. Each step in the guide corresponds to a size of glenosphere offered within the modular glenoid system. If determined that the position of the glenosphere is not ideal, the surgeon may remove the pin and reposition it. The primary reamer corresponding to the base plate diameter is introduced over the guide pin. Reaming should be continued until conformity between the reamer face and glenoid surface is achieved. Next, the peripheral reamer is used, which corresponds to the size of the desired glenosphere. This reamer has a positive stop and will clear tissue to allow for glenosphere seating. The drill tip is selected and attached to the modular reamer shaft. The drill is advanced until its collar is flush with the glenoid face. On the back table, the selected base plate and central post are joined, gently placing the central post onto the base plate taper. The base plate assembly is placed into the base plate taper assembly press. The handle of the press is then rotated until the laser line within the window of the press indicates that sufficient force has been applied to couple the base plate components. The base plate is then removed from the press and placed onto the threaded base plate inserter. The base plate is impacted into the glenoid until the base plate is flush to the prepared glenoid surface. One may choose between placing locking fixed angle 5.5 mm or non locking 4.5 mm variable angle screws within each of the peripheral screw holes. For non locking screw preparation, the variable angle non locking drill guide is inserted into a peripheral screw hole and directed toward the desired screw trajectory. The 3 mm drill bit is then used to create the hole for any peripheral screws. The number on the drill bit shaft should be noted as they indicate the length of the peripheral screw to be used. The drill guide is removed from the base plate and the screw is inserted using the hex driver until it is fully seated within the base plate. For locking screws, thread the locking screw drill guide into the selected base plate hole. Note that on standard base plates, the orientation of the locking screws will be 10 degrees divergent from the central axis. The 3 mm drill is again used, followed by the hex driver to seat the screw. The use of locking or non-locking screws and their placement within the base plate is based on surgeon preference. A glenosphere is threaded onto the glenosphere inserter and introduced over the base plate taper. Provisional seating of the taper may be achieved by pushing the glenosphere onto the base plate using the inserter handle. Once seated, the inserter is unthreaded from the glenosphere and removed. The glenosphere is then impacted onto the base plate taper using several sharp mallet blows. Finally, the glenosphere locking screw is inserted through the threaded hole within the glenosphere and seated fully using the hex driver.